Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Apologies for the very slight delay there. Um, and welcome to this morning session with the Edinburgh Chamber of Commerce, um, which is the latest in what's been up until now a weekly session that we've had with the City of Edinburgh Council. Um, giving us updates on, on how things are, are progressing. For those who don't know me, I'm Joanne Davidson. I'm Director of Policy here at the Chamber. And I'm standing in this morning for Liz McEnevy, our Chief Executive, who's on annual leave, so sends her apologies for, for today. Um, I'm delighted to welcome our guest speaker, Councillor Cammy Day. I'm, I'm sure you're all very familiar with Councillor Day, but as you know, he's the Deputy Leader of the City of Edinburgh Council. He's the leader of the Labour Group on the Council. And as Deputy Leader, he's a member of several committees, including the Edinburgh Partnership, the Leadership Advisory Panel, the Licensing Board. And at the moment, all importantly, he's the Vice Convener of the Council's Policy and Sustainability Committee, who are responsible for many of the big city initiatives that are happening um, at the moment too, in terms of spaces for people, the City Mobility Plan and the City Plan 2030, but absolutely crucially at the moment, responsible for the City's Adaptation and Renewal Plan, which is the plan um, that we are all um, sort of adhering to in terms of the City's recovery and emergence from, from lockdown. So without any further ado, I'll, I'll hand over to Councillor Dee. Thanks, Councillor. Thank you, and apologies for being late. Partly the meeting delay and also the council doesn't allow me to use Zoom, so I've got to switch between things. Anyway, I suppose just I've uh, got give an update to Chamber of Commerce on a number of things, and I'm happy to take any questions. Don't promise to have all the answers, but I'm uh, come back with any issues that I don't have uh, the answers now. I think as you mentioned, the the adapting new program is the approach that we are taking in Edinburgh with five, six key themes to try and get the city or the council and the city back and support businesses as much as we possibly can. Um, I suppose one of the issues has been recently, the, today sees the launch of Forever Edinburgh, which the council has been working with ETAG, so the SIG group, um, and supporting that with some grant funding to kick it off. And I, I hope that's that's a market and plan to try and get people out and about in the city, welcome international, continue to welcome international guests. I've seen the city this weekend being slightly busier, whether that's because of the good weather or, or um, welcome to say I'm not quite sure but I suppose the more we can do and the more that I can hear from businesses about what we can do then I would also appreciate that. Um, I'm sure you'll have seen the, the business support grants we've processed on half of government both here and in Midlothian of over £112 million which I hope has been a lifeline to get um, that money right into the businesses and I appreciate there was a delay in getting that out to begin with and then we've um, put a whole number of officers into making sure that the support into the business community is done as quickly as possible. Um, you may have seen just last week where we've um, at request of some of the small businesses in the high streets about um, allowing pavement and chair licenses to be uh, reduced or, or, or um, suspended for some time so we've agreed to do that I think till October so all the shops and retailers who are using outside space we have suspended any payment requirement for that until at least until october um we're of course trying to get the construction site back that we support so both the trams as soon as we were able to the tram network has the, the tram construction work has been put back in i'm sure people have seen the work that's happened in and around leith walk um and even during covid our, our tram team have continued to work behind the scenes with our plans and things and now that we're able to construct their back out on site in Leith Walk. Um, at the same time we're pushing ahead with our own site in Granton that you know we bought from National Grid some years ago to get kickstart with that. The um, Western Village project's kicking off. Um, we've some suggestions about how the um, gas tower might be um, used as a publicity tool for Edinburgh going forward um, and just the need to get back on track with the construction of um, the National Galleries working with them and the the many thousands of homes that we're hoping to put in there and for me you know that continued discussion about getting the tram line 1B we should start speaking about that now as we progress the, the current state of the trams. Um, <coughs> So I, I suppose I think we're doing it. The, the, and the latest thing we, we've tried to do as, uh, as a result, again, from pressure from members and from the business community, is to listen more to the business community. So by setting up the 
um, local um, business champions in, in, I suppose, in town centres, parts of the city, to hear from retailers and small business owners about what we're doing well and what we're maybe not doing so well. And I'd appreciate some honest feedback on their Spaces for People project, because whilst in some parts of the city, um, widening the space for pedestrians is seen as helpful and I think business owners in Victoria Street for example who previously were against closing up the street are quite keen to do these measures so it would be helpful to hear from the business community but is the spaces for people project working is it a hindrance could it be improved should it be scrapped etc um, and I suppose just finally maybe to say on the council where we we are not back in the office yet and we are at the earliest thinking of that being probably mid-October um, but I think we all accept that the, the number of businesses I was on a call a few months ago with the business community uh, telling us about particularly I think it was Roddy through the city centre stuff but the number of businesses that were going to the wall potentially and what would happen um, post furlough um, so I appreciate we're all trying to navigate our way around that and keep the city buzzing so if there's more people think we need to be doing within the constraints we've got then it would be more than happy to hear that and I would just end on that. Great thank you Councillor Day for, for, for that update as, as you touched on there's a lot going on at the moment a lot of um, different initiatives happening across the city as, as well as obviously you know, some elements of the day job are, are, are still continuing to. So there is there is a lot to go on. And, and you touched on some of the issues there that we know the businesses are facing, particularly smaller businesses, um, localised businesses. So um, I'm sure hopefully our guests today will have a lot of good feedback for you and a, and, and a lot of questions. Can I open the floor, please, if anyone would like to raise a question or even, as Councillor Day has asked, give any feedback or pass a comment on? Who'd like to go first? Sorry, anyone? No. Can I can I maybe kick off then? Is it? I mean, you, you mentioned the Spaces for People program. Can can you say a little bit more about what that that is, Councillor Day, and and and, and what well, obviously there have been some impacts of it that we've seen already, um, in terms of the pavement spaces and things like that. But can you talk a little bit more about about what that is and where it fits into the other council initiatives at the moment? Yeah. So it's, it's principally about trying to create that social distancing space, particularly in areas where we know it's busy, Stockbridge, Morningside, um, to allow people or to encourage people to get out. Um, and we know people are walking and cycling a bit more. Um, the widening of the payments, I think, allows people to get access to the local businesses easier. I appreciate they're not all up and running yet. I suppose where it fits with our wider strategy, you know, we have particularly the city centre or city centre transformation, but for me, it links to that wider um, policy on on um, our carbon zero targets for 2030. You know, some of these measures that we put in place now are, are temporary, and um, but there are parts of if you know past the Western general and see the the kind of medium term temporary cycle routes we've put in to help people cycle safely on some fairly busy streets. And I think these should be staying. You know, the, the, there's no need to rip everything back up again. But there needs to be a discussion with the business community as well about are these measures in some of the town centre parts, as I call them, are they working? You know, I, I don't know that. Business people, and I appreciate there's, you know, the balance we've got is between trying to do what we can to support business by also providing space for people to walk around the city safer during the current regulations. And I would genuinely appreciate constructive feedback from people about whether these projects are working. We we got five million pounds to do this. I think we've spent about three. We are applying for further monies from the government because it's it seems to be successful. Um and I mean I don't know because I'm not a business person, but the feedback I've heard is positive, but I'm pretty sure there has been some that I think there's business people in Morningside saying it will ruin their business. And I don't understand how or why, but I would genuinely appreciate somebody telling me if you, by taking it away, my business will be successful or by changing the layouts, it will work. I, d I don't know. And I'd, I'd need to hear that from the business me, or is it just, and I don't mean this in any, with any disrespect, is it just a disgruntled business owner? And it's not the view of 
the business community. Thanks. Thanks for that. Um, any comments? Any comments or thoughts on on what uh, Councillor Day has just said? That what what is the experience of of businesses on on the ground that 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 you're aware of? Um, would anyone like to Louise? Hi, um, Councillor Day. Um, a couple of things I'm interested in. Um, I think certainly in a, a in terms of making comments about people in Morningside or Stockbridge and their businesses and how that works, it's probably not um, something that I can do specifically um, being a city centre retailer. Um, however, one of the things I'm interested in is probably, you know, a couple of weeks ago with um, Adam McVeigh, he was saying that you, you've done a poll with your um, people to sort of look at returning to work. Um, but, um, most of them were saying they wouldn't want to continue to work from home. So I was really pleased to hear about your potential of office returning mid-October. Um, I'm interested to know sort of numbers of uh, your employees that you would think you will be bringing back because certainly from a city centre perspective it is something that is impacting us sure. um, specifically during um, you know midweek trading and appreciate we're right in the middle of what would have been the busiest time, well, one of our busiest times um, from a festival perspective, but, you know, last week, significantly, our football was still hugely, like, hugely down. Um, and from a business point of view, it's thinking about how, and, and appreciate all the initiatives that are happening, but um, I'm interested specifically in terms of, do you, you know, are you encouraging businesses to come back to work? And as and when uh, do you think that might be coming and what does that look like? Um, so we have put a survey out to all our staff and members asking them what their mix would like to be. Would they come back to work? Would they stay at home? <coughs> Excuse me. Or would there be some hybrid model? And I think for most people, it is some hybrid model of, you know, working from home, the odd extra day maybe helps them manage childcare or just makes it easier for them to manage, um, but not looking to be based at home all the time. And I, I'm probably an example of that, you know, I'd like my home becoming my office. I think they're two different things, and I would like to get back into the office uh, environment. So they, that survey's on. <clears throat> see, that survey's ongoing now, and by October we'll have a decision. But I mean, given the current guidelines, that's still only looking at I think twenty thirty percent occupation of both both for us Waverley Court and and um, City Chambers. Um, and I know from some of the large businesses across here, they've been told will not to be determined this year even so um and then maybe maybe you have a different figure because uh, this was a hearsay figure that there are around forty thousand office workers not in the city center anymore because they're at home and when you think how many of that equates to people buying their coffees and sandwiches and wines and things after work it's a substantial one so the more i think we can do there's there's obviously a there's a balance for us because i think officials in the council may be a wee bit more nervous than politicians would be in some politicians last week in committee saying we should get back to um, physical committees rather than the virtual ones and that will encourage us to be back in the city um, along with our officers and so there's a job for us I think to start pushing that boundary a bit more to if, if, if city leaders are in in their work then you know it maybe encourages other business leaders to, to do the same um, whilst appreciating that has to be done along with all the safety guidelines um, the social distancing as it is just now I think there's a job for Adam and I to start pushing that envelope a bit more but when we go back into the office um, it will be limited numbers so I think it's the safety all the council's facilities have been uh, deep cleaned so they're, they're effectively ready to go um, but yeah so if there's any more we can do to promote people getting back to work in the safety centre within the guidelines and more than happy to, uh, more than happy to do that Great, that's good to hear. Yes. Because certainly that 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 will help, I think, uh, as well. And appreciate, you know, everything has to be done with a safety uh, perspective. And I know clearly, obviously, with the schools going back this week, I think that will be, uh, you know, a test for everybody really in terms of how we manage that in terms of, um, you know, increased, um, you know, traffic and increased or reduced transport and so on. So it'll be interesting to see what comes from it. But thank you. Yeah. 
thanks Louise and thanks Councillor Day. Um, Andrew Morrison, you've raised your hand on, on the chat. Yes, uh, Councillor Day, this is actually a question about procurement and how procurement can be used by the Council uh, to actually help local businesses as well. Uh, the Council at the moment, the procurement department, only have one contract out, out for tender. They've got 27 future contract notices. So what I'm wondering is when are these 27 future contracts going to be coming through and actually advertise for tender so as local businesses can then um, start bidding for them. Thanks, Andrew. Um, I don't have that information, but I, what I would say is, and, and I will get it and come back to you, but we are absolutely supporting our small business. Adam and I have just come off a call this morning um, discussing plans, further plans for the city centre and Prince Street Gardens and talking about, you know, whatever the next generation of businesses are in, in and around Prince Street Gardens should be local ones. You know, we, with no disrespect to anybody who's on the call from Starbucks or Costa, we don't need a Costa or a Starbucks in Prince Street Gardens or in Mora. There's plenty of local businesses in Edinburgh and the Lothians who could support new revisions for how we run Prince Street Gardens concessions. So, but, and, and absolutely, we've, we've had this discussion with our head of procurement about anything we can do through our procurement legislation to try and encourage local business. And they're always, I mean, it's, our procurement's run by a former lawyer. So I think he always errs on the legal side of it, whereas we accept that everything we do has a risk in it. And we do maybe just have to push that risk a bit further um, without breaking rules, but we can bend the rules as far as we can to try and support local business. You'll have seen maybe the last couple of council committees we've had, both from the administration and from opposition actually, um, joint motions of support to do different things in the business community and support local SMEs. My councillor Leslie Cameron, who's the small business champions, key to get her there and see what businesses are telling her. And if there's more we need to do to change procurement policy within the council to support local businesses, then we'll absolutely uh, do that, Andrew. But let me come back to you on at least the, next, the 27 future contracts. And I will have discussion with Andrew Kerr about how are we absolutely going to push um, support for local businesses. We, we did the same through the living wage when we were initially told we couldn't force um, bidders to pay the living wage but because it would be against the law, we were told. But what we did is we waited the, the decision to companies who would pay them, for example. So you know, I think it would be easy for us to weigh a decision on awarding a contract if you were a local business and supporting local employment and paying a living wage. That should give your, your bid a higher chance than some multinational chain who's got procurement experts. So let me come back to the 27 contracts, Andrew. Uh, but, but a genuine statement that we, we, we are doing what we can to, within any, any of the council's contracts, to support the small medium enterprises in Edinburgh. I think, you know, for local businesses, if they can win council contracts, that's going to help them to actually uh, keep jobs. It's going to help them create new jobs and, and give new opportunities. So having only one contract at the moment and the whole of the council out to tender is, is, is rather concerning. And, and I will I will check there and come back to you, Andrew. I don't have the information here, but I will come back to you later today. Thank you. Thank, thanks for that, Andrew. Any other questions or comments or points anyone would like to raise while we have Councillor Day here here with us? Anything on any of the initiatives that are happening, or even anything more broadly at the moment? No. Can I can I ask a quick question, Councillor Day? Then, in terms of things like city plan and some of the sort of business as usual initiatives that the council is, is working on because I know that some things have been happening in the background on those that would maybe be useful for us to sort of understand what work if any has been being done and, and where some of those big strategic projects are, are at at the moment. Yeah so I, I suppose the city plan continues you know it's I think the latest update we got just last week so I can ask Andrew to give send some stuff around to you guys. Um, but you know, whilst we're in a really difficult position through COVID, you know, the city is still having to, I suppose, look forward. The tram work's not going to stop. The vision to build 20,000 homes in the city is not stopping. In fact, if anything, 
it needs to accelerate. With a thousand people in, in um, temporary accommodation or temporary unsuitable accommodation right now, and quite soon these hotels might be kicking people out and we need to find some of them to live. So our, our big initiative at building, building the city um, is absolutely happening. The, the, the city centre transformation project is absolutely happening. Um, all of these meet with conflict because people don't want to see, some people don't want to see development in the city. Uh, for me, the, the tram coming to North Edinburgh, Line 1B, and then a line out to the bio quarter, the Royal Infirmary, and the kids, is, it should be the next discussion we are, we are having because of the, and because of the thousands of homes we're building out that side. So I suppose some of our big strategic policies have to continue behind the scenes. So, and, and then the hope, I think the absolute hope that there will be a, a much bigger recovery in the next year or two. The city is not stalling. You know? There were requests put to council committee a few weeks back that we should suspend a number of these large scale projects, um, the city uh, plan and the trams until we have a clearer picture. But, you know, we refuse to accept that. It's, it's, this is still the capital city of Scotland and we are still one of the best places to work, live and visit. Um, and and all these, these large strategic projects have to continue. You know, we're having our discussion very, very soon about the um, Haymarket development and our support for an EICC supported hotel etc these are all continuing because we we need to have that vision of the next five ten years plus and I, I hope that's what the business community think i'm not pretending we always get it right but uh that a vision that the city shouldn't just go on hold because of covid you know we've we've had disasters in the past and we've still got to have a vibrant successful economic city and we do have taken a big hit i accept that and but i think the the uh, businesses will all bounce back or, or, or a number of them or as, as I think as the Bank England governor said it will give opportunities for new businesses to um, to inspire through this so I hope Edinburgh sees that you know the 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 absolute technology we've seen in the last few months for me tells the people at like code base and tech base and all these technical geniuses that have started businesses in Edinburgh which I don't understand but I think they do a brilliant job for me feeds into, so I, I'm the political lead for Smart City. And I think there's an absolute opportunity for Edinburgh to maybe grab a part of that and have some, you know, uh, try to persuade if there's anybody from the universities here, um, universities to start looking at basing a campus in the north of the city. And is there a chance for us to have some kind of technical base? I appreciate we've got to have a fight with the bio quarter and some of the university's technical places around um, Bristol Square, but there's a chance for us to be visionary for being a digital, you know, the, the, we've claimed will be the um, data capital of the UK or of Europe. I think I've said Europe. So here's our time to do something quite exciting, quite different, and welcome a, a new breed of businesses into Edinburgh that we've not had a lot of. I appreciate Code Base, etc., are an absolute brilliant example of that, but um, anything we can do to encourage the expansion of these types of businesses as a is a much larger strategic smart city approach. Our vision to put a smart city operations centre into North Edinburgh, I think, will, led by the council, um, is an opportunity for us to then see, is there a new community of smart city digital businesses that might come to the north of the city as well? So, yeah, so behind the scenes, all this stuff continues. It's, it's, it's why sometimes our officers are just a bit raggled because they've got to get on with a lot of their big strategic projects still whilst trying to manage the implications of COVID. And I'm sure a lot of your businesses are, are the same. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and, and the whole, you know, business as usual message, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure will be welcomed, obviously, as usual as it can be in the current circumstances and obviously with safety being being the first priority, but, but that'll be a welcome message, I'm sure. Just a final one for me, I know we're running over very, very slightly, but I, so when we, one of the first sessions of these that we did with Andrew Kerr, he mentioned that the adaptation and renewal plan was looking to September at that point. Um, what What is the kind of next phase? Obviously, I, I, we're still, you know, we're, we're not as out of lockdown as, as maybe we thought we might be by this point. Um, and obviously given the uncertainty that still exists in terms of some of the regional lockdowns that we've seen in Aberdeen and elsewhere, elsewhere in the country, what, what, is, what is the process the council are taking in terms of that forward, that forward planning? Because obviously September is, is now 
almost upon us. So it, it would be good to just to very briefly understand what your process is in terms of adapting that that plan as 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 we move forward. Sorry, Councillor, you're on mute. Oh, sorry. Um, has Andrew shared the plan with you? Yes, he has. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I suppose it, I suppose helpfully it's. The word that for me is like it adapts as we go so we're changing as we go we've got some kind of vision statements in that it changes as we go in the hope we don't get another lockdown although i heard a rumor yesterday that some one of our senior environmental staff is concerned that where edinburgh's going given what happened in aberdeen so that's really concerning um i think the health protection people's in england at least saying schools take priority if we're at that high level of risk schools will take priority i'm not quite sure we've entirely said the same in scotland yet but that's a real worry so if we're close to that risk level which i believe we are and um, then all the schools go back i would be really worried if we have the government saying well okay the risk levels went too high so the businesses will have to close down again as we're just starting to get um back up and running but i suppose the, pl the plan is adapting as we go and every week andrew and his um, leadership team are with adam and i going through all the papers about how we're moving on to the next level and sometimes that's having to be you know if the government's making announcements we've got to rapid the change of decisions if there's something kicking off in the business community or in the uh, volunteer third sector i'm pretty confident we'll see a whole number of um employers both through the business community and in the third sector potentially hit the wall or, or or change what they do and we need to be able to react to that so it is it's it's a real challenge the the there's a cross-party group of i think all the yeah i think all the parties on that um that's meeting to go over the adaption and your new plan every month i think as well so the politicians are engaged in it and i think it's an opportunity for us to as one of the business people said on the tourism call I was on that if we think we're going back to walk into our offices and do the same as normal you're walking into the past now and that's I think that's really exciting because it says there's something different and new we shouldn't just reopen everything for the council and talking about, as we did before if there's a chance to try and do something exciting and new that's that's better for the city going forward then we should absolutely take that chance uh now and do that but I'm, I'm happy to get the most updated plan over to you guys if you and, and then take any questions and comments on that as well, uh, Louise. That, that, that would be great. Thank, thank you very much for that. Um, I'm very conscious of time we've overrun very slightly, so apologies for that. But um, can I just thank Councillor Day for taking time out to come and chat with us this morning, give us that very useful update. Um, there was a lot in that. I'm sure that our business can take, take some, some comfort, some heart from it at the moment. So thank you for that. Um, can I thank all of the attendees this morning for coming along? Hopefully you're finding these sessions useful. Please feed back to us if not, or if you are, or what you like or what you don't like. Um, and as we keep the engagement with the City Council going, and um, we look forward to hearing from you. Um, with Rebecca will send out um, a note of when the next one of these sessions is and hopefully we'll see some of, of you there as well. So thank you very much again. Thank you Councillor Day and thank you for everyone for your contributions and your attendance and we'll see you again soon. Thank you very much.